In the previous video on Newton's third law of motion, we discussed action-reaction force pairs. Newton's third law says that for every action force, there's an equal but opposite reaction force. That basically means that when object A applies a force on object B, object B applies the same strength force back on object A. This is why hitting glass hurts. Your hand applies a force on the glass, which can break the glass, while the glass applies the same force back on your hand, which hurts your hand. To fully understand Newton's third law, we need to use all three of Newton's laws together. Newton's first law of motion says that an object will not change its motion unless an unbalanced force acts on it. Newton's second law of motion tells us that when the forces are equal, the smaller mass will have the larger acceleration. And remember, Newton's third law says that if you apply a force on something, that object applies the same strength force back on you. Let's look at a problem of two people on a frictionless surface pushing off each other. Think of it like two people on rollerblades or two people on ice skates. But we'll look at this as having no friction at all. Let's say the people have equal masses. Both person A and person B have a mass of 70 kilograms. If person A pushes on person B with a force of 700 newtons, what Newton's third law of motion says is that person B will push back on person A with the same strength force, but in the opposite direction. So the forces are equal in strength. We can then figure out the acceleration of each person. Now the acceleration of person B is 700 newtons divided by 70 kilograms. And that equals an acceleration of 10 meters per second squared. Now person A, we can use the same formula. Now if they are applied the same force and have the same mass as person B, we should get the same answer. 700 newtons divided by 70 kilograms is also 10 meters per second squared. So both these people will accelerate away from each other at the same rate, 10 meters per second squared. And that makes sense. They're applied the same force and they have the same mass. But what if person B had less mass than person A? So in this scenario, we have person B is actually half the mass of person A, only 35 kilograms, not 70. Now, the first thing we want to do is look at the forces. So person A, once again, will push on person B with 700 newtons. Now, you might be thinking that person B will push back with less force because they're smaller, but that is incorrect. Newton's third law says that for every action force, there's an equal but opposite reaction force. So if person A pushes on person B with 700 newtons, then person B pushes back on person A with also 700 newtons. The forces are equal in strength, but opposite in direction. And that part gets tricky, because what you might be confusing is the force that's being applied on the objects with the accelerations of the objects. And for that, we need Newton's second law of motion. Now we know that the acceleration of person A is force over mass, which was 70 newtons divided by 700 kilograms, uh, 70 kilograms, giving us a acceleration of 10 meters per second squared. We know that, we did that in the previous problem. Now let's look at person B. Person B uses the same formula. The force is the same, 700 newtons. But since their mass is only 35 kilograms, that means their acceleration is 20 meters per second squared. Now person B is gonna have a much larger acceleration. And that makes sense. If you and somebody else push off each other on ice skates, the person that is smaller with less mass will accelerate away at a higher rate than the other person away from you. It's not because anybody's pushing harder, it's because the masses are different, which makes the accelerations different. Let's try one more example where the two people have very different masses. 
Now we have person A is 140 kilograms and person B is only 35 kilograms. We know when they push off each other that they will both accelerate away from each other. The question is, which object will have the larger acceleration? Now, if you're saying the bigger mass has a lower acceleration, you're correct. So person A should have a lower acceleration than person B. And that makes sense. If a young child pushes off uh, their mom or dad, the mom or dad barely moves backwards and the child will move away from their parent uh, at a much higher rate. So let's take a look at the, at the math here. Now we know that if once again, person A pushes on person B with let's say 700 Newtons, even though they are much larger than person B, the forces are still equal. That is Newton's third law of motion, that for every action force, there's an equal but opposite reaction force. The forces are equal. We can't confuse the force with the acceleration. Now, we already looked at the acceleration of person B, but we'll do it one more time. Always good to get practice. 700 Newtons divided by 35 kilograms gives person B an acceleration of 20 meters per second squared. Now person A uses the same equation. The force is the same, that's Newton's third law, but the masses are different. This mass is 140 kilograms, which means person A will accelerate at five meters per second squared away from person B. So person B has the larger acceleration. They will accelerate away from person A at a higher rate because they have less mass, not because person A pushes on person B harder. The forces are equal, right? That's Newton's third law. Don't confuse the accelerations that you see with the forces that are acting on the objects. This toy helicopter weighs two newtons. That means it needs an upward force greater than two newtons to overcome gravity and accelerate upwards. The helicopter's rotor blades push air down and the air pushes the rotor blade up. If the rotor blade pushes air down with a force of three newtons, with what force will the air push up on the rotor blade? Three newtons, of course. Those forces are equal. But which will have a larger acceleration? the small mass air molecules accelerating down or the large mass helicopter accelerating up. The air, of course, because the small mass has a higher acceleration. The helicopter does accelerate upward quickly, but the air is accelerating downward faster. When firefighters spray water out of the hose, the hose pushes the water forward and the water pushes the hose backwards, and the firefighters are holding that hose. So which would have a larger acceleration? The large mass firefighters or the small mass water droplets. Remember, the larger the mass, the smaller the acceleration. So the hose and the firefighters have a higher mass, they'll have a lower acceleration, while the water droplets are small and will have a higher acceleration. When water is pushed out of this rotating sprinkler, the water is pushed forward and the rotating sprinkler is pushed in the opposite direction, backwards. Which object will have a larger acceleration? the small mass water droplets accelerating forward or the large mass sprinkler accelerating backwards. Remember, smaller mass, higher acceleration. So the water will have a higher acceleration than the sprinkler in the opposite direction. In order for a swimmer to move forward, the swimmer must push something backwards. What the swimmer does is pushes water backwards and the water pushes the swimmer forwards which would have a larger acceleration, the large swimmer or the small water droplets. If you said that the swimmer has a higher mass, so accelerate at a lower rate, you are correct. In order for a baseball bat to change the direction of a baseball, there must be a force acting on the baseball from the baseball bat, which would have a larger acceleration, the five ounce baseball or the 33 ounce baseball bat. If you said the five ounce baseball, you are correct. Less mass, higher acceleration. Now the baseball has a huge acceleration. It's maybe moving towards the catcher at maybe 100 miles an hour, and it will leave the bat and go the opposite direction at maybe 
100 miles an hour in a fraction of a second. That's a huge acceleration. The baseball bat does slow down a little bit, but not as much as the baseball. When a duck is sitting on the ground, gravity is pulling it down, and the normal force from the ground is holding up the duck. But when a duck starts to fly, gravity is still pulling the duck down. It needs some force pushing upwards to balance out gravity. Now what the duck does is it pushes air down, and the air pushes back up on the duck which would have a bigger acceleration, the duck accelerating upwards or the air accelerating downward. If you realize that the air has less mass than the duck and has a higher acceleration, then you are correct. When this man jumps off the boat, he pushes backwards on the boat and the boat pushes him forwards. Now the boat's sitting on water, which is low friction, so the boat will move backwards which will have a larger acceleration, the big boat or the small man. If you said the man has a smaller mass, he will accelerate at a higher rate, you were correct. In order for a rocket to launch, it doesn't need to push off of the ground or air. All it needs to do is push something out the back, and whatever it pushes out the back will push forward on the rocket. So a real rocket will burn a fuel and push that exhaust out the back of the rocket. And the exhaust will push the rocket forward or in the upward direction. So which would have a larger acceleration, the rocket or the exhaust? If you said the exhaust would have a higher acceleration because it has less mass, you are correct. The rocket does accelerate upward at a high rate but the exhaust is accelerating downward at a much higher rate because it has less mass. When humans first landed on the moon in 1969, two astronauts, Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong, walked on its surface, while the third astronaut, Michael Collins, orbited the moon in the command service module. To leave the surface of the moon, Buzz and Neil used the lower portion of the lunar module as a launch pad, and the upper portion blasted off and joined with Michael Collins in CSM and returned to Earth. Which object would have a larger acceleration? The large lunar lander accelerating upwards or the small gas particles and exhaust accelerating downwards? If you said the small gas particles, you are correct. Less mass, higher acceleration. The lunar lander did accelerate upward but at a lower rate than the gases accelerating downward. But it was enough to get them back up the command service module. Remember, the key to understanding how forces affect the motion of an object is to apply all three of Newton's laws together. The object will not accelerate unless an unbalanced force acts on it. When the first object pushes on the second object, the second object pushes back on the first object with the same strength force. The accelerations of those objects depend on the masses of the objects. The smaller mass will have the larger acceleration.